Okay, so here we have f of x equals to the absolute value of x, and we want to find the derivative of that function at x equals zero using the limit definition of derivative, right? If we take a look kind of intuitively at the graph of y equals absolute value of x, it's unclear what is the slope, right? Derivative at zero is the slope of a tangent line at zero. What is the slope at zero? It's unclear because on the left, it's negative one. On the right, it's positive one. Or even if you didn't know that, it's just negative on the left, right? It's positive slope on the right. So at zero, maybe the slope is zero, maybe the slope is negative or positive. It's kind of unclear what it is. So, but we can figure this out using the limit definition of derivative. And just remember, this is the definition, the derivative at any value x is the limit is h to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And in this case, specific case at zero, right, we just plug in zero for x. And so we get f of zero plus h or f of h and f of zero. So now we need to figure out what this limit is. So first off, what is f of h? Well, it's just f of h is just plugging in h in for x in the absolute value function. In other words, that's just absolute value of h. And f of zero, again, it's just plugging in zero in for x in the function. So we have absolute value of zero or zero. And so our limit simplifies to the limit as h approaches zero of absolute value of h over h. Now, it's kind of... Again, this is limit is not exactly super easy to compute, just kind of thinking about it. So what we can do is take a look at the one-sided limits, right? If the one-sided limits are equal, then the limit exists and it's equal to that those one-sided limits. And if they're not equal, then they the limit does not exist. And so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the one-sided limits from the left of that and see, let's see, is this equal to the one-sided limits of the right of this? So on the left, Remember, our h value is negative. And so when we plug in a small negative number in for h, the absolute value of h is going to be negative h. Now, remember, the definition of an absolute value of a number, like h or x or whatever, it's just h, right? When h is bigger than or equal to 0, and it's negative h when h is less than or equal to 0. Now, it's, it always confuses. It's a common mistake or kind of confusing point. Why is it negative h when h is negative? Well, think about, let's say h is negative 5, right? The absolute value of h is positive 5, right? So the absolute value of h is not just h, because then it would just be negative 5. It's negative h, in other words, negative times negative 5. Those negatives cancel and it becomes positive. So in other words, this negative h just means we flip the sign of the number. In this case, we're flipping it to become positive, even though there's a negative sign there. So in this case, what we're going to have is the absolute value of h is negative h, and the h's will cancel, and so we'll get negative 1 as our limit. On the other hand, when h is slightly positive, right, when we're coming in from the right, then the absolute value of h is just h. Whatever number we choose is just going to be that exact number. And so we plug it in, h over h is 1, and so you can see here that the limits are not equal. From the right, it's 1, and from the left, it's negative 1. And so that means that our original limit here does not exist. And so we say, because this limit does not exist, the derivative at zero does not exist. And so we say that f, right, at the absolute value of x is not differentiable at x equals zero. There is no slope, the way you determine the slope at zero.